So if we have a valid instrument, one can perform the IV estimation by a method called two stage least squares. And as the name suggests, one runs two ordinary least squares estimations. And here I explain it for the case that the original regression has just one explanatory variable that is endogenous and that we also have a single instrument. Then in the first stage, we regress the endogenous explanatory variable on the instrument. So we run a regression where we regress X on the instrument Z. And then we compute the predicted values X hat of this regression. Yeah? So we take this OLS estimator, beta hat zero of the constant, beta hat one times Z, we set the uh, residual to zero. So this would be our predicted value from the first stage regression. And then in the second stage regression is actually the original regression, but we substitute the endogenous explanatory variable by the predicted values from stage one. So instead of having here an X, we regress the dependent variable Y on this X hat, which we have computed from the first stage regression. And if the instrument satisfies relevance and exogenity conditions, then the OLS estimator beta hat of this second stage equation is actually the instrumental variable estimator and it's a consistent estimator of uh, the true uh, values beta. Yeah, so beta zero hat is consistent and beta one hat is consistent. Let us illustrate this two stage least squares estimation with a simulation in R. So I define n equal to 10,000, that's the number of observation. I draw an error term u from a standard normal distribution. Here I draw an instrument set that's also just standard normally distributed. And here I specify the um, explanatory variable x. So it depends on set. That means the instrument is relevant. So if we look at the correlation X with Z, we have a positive correlation. X also depends on U. Um, that means X is endogenous. It's correlated with the error term. And there's also some additional variation in X um, from a standard normal distribution. Then our true coefficients shall be beta 0 is equal to 0 and beta 1 shall be equal to 1. And here I specify the y. It's just beta 0 plus beta 1x plus this error term u. Now, if I just run an OLS regression of y on x, I've written the code here, we um, don't consistently estimate beta 1. We get a systematically larger coefficient of 1.34 here. Yeah, that's because X is endogenous in this regression. It's positively correlated with the error term U. So we have a positive bias in our OLS estimator beta 1 hat and it's systematically larger than the true causal effect uh, beta 1, which is 1. And here we estimate 1.34. Let us now compute the instrumental variable estimator using this two-stage least squares procedure. So the first stage regression, I call it reg1, is that we regress our endogenous explanatory variable x on the instrument. We can take a look at it. Yeah, so we uh, have here a positive relationship. The coefficient is close to 1. That's due to the fact how we have specified x. So indeed, if z uh, increases by one unit, then also x should increase by one unit. And now we want to have the predicted or fitted values of x from this regression. Then we can use a function fitted. Um, x hat shall be the fitted value from reg 1. So these are basically um, using just this formula 0.02339 plus 0.98719 uh, times the values of z, and this gives us these predicted values of, of x. And then the second stage regression, 
um, is kind of basically this original regression. So we request Y with the difference that we don't request it on X, but we request it on this fitted value on X hat. And uh, let's take a look at the second stage regression. And we see now indeed our estimated coefficient uh, um, beta hat 1 is very close to the two causal effect. So the two causal effect beta 1 is equal to 1 and now we estimate a coefficient in this IV regression in this two stage square regression which is actually pretty close to 1 and one can show that this is a consistent estimator uh, now of beta 1. Kind of the intuition for the result is that the first stage regression explains x only using exogenous variation. So we, we, we explain basically this x hat captures how x varies due to the instrument and the instrument is exogenous variation which is not correlated with the error term. So this variation in x hat will also not be correlated with the error term. The correlation of x hat with, with u is essentially zero. So there's always a little bit uh, correlation in the sample uh, that, that's not zero due to sample variation, but uh, theoretically this variation will be zero and it's also pretty close to zero uh, in the sample even. So this x hat basically captures the variation in x that is not correlated with the error term. And so if, uh, but um, it's also kind of has the same dimension than x. Uh, in this regression. So if we compute the fitted value, the average dimensions of x are the same, um, um, of x hat are the same than for x. And in the second stage, if we regress y on x hat, we kind of only use this exogenous variation x that was induced from the instrument um, to see how this affects y. And therefore we can kind of this x hat is now sort of exogenous in this regression. And there we, for we can estimate the causal effect. Okay, that's just a verbal intuition that it really works. You have to go through the math, but one can show that it works. That indeed this two stage least square estimator is a consistent estimator of uh, the causal effect of x on y, assuming that our instrument satisfies the exogeneity and relevance condition, which it does in our simulated data set.